So this is a question that we've getting quite a bit in the shorts and here in the YouTube channel, which is how do you texture glass? And today, my friends, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So say hi here to our Plague Doctor. We haven't seen him in a while after the Marvel Designer course. And uh, yeah, today I'm going to show you how to texture like glass, how to use a Substance Painter to add some nice layers and how to set up those layers here inside of Blender which, by the way, you can apply inside of Maya as well, to generate something that looks very, very, very nice. So, yeah, let's jump right in. Very well, guys. Now, before we jump into Substance Painter and I show you how to do glass, which is very simple, we're going to be using this scene right here, so that you guys don't say that I never use Blender. Here we go, we're inside of Blender, and I'm going to explain to you something that's very important. For any glass render or glass thing that you want to do, glass always has three important properties. The lights on your scene, the material, the shader itself, and then the textures that we use, okay? So yes, we're gonna be talking about textures, but don't ignore the other two because they're very important to get a good glass on your element. So right now we have this like night scene here with our Plague Doctor from our Marvelous Designer course, which by the way, you can find on the comment section in there. And what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna bring the weight all the way up and in the transmission element, and as you can see now, this is glass. This is pretty much glass. I do have a solidify modifier, so this is a, a completely sort of like flat surface right here, and with the solidify modifier, we're generating a, another effect, right? Another sort of like thickness to it, so that it looks and gives us a realistic effect, and that's it. We're gonna have two things, or actually three things that we can control here on the shader. First of all, the weight of the transmission. The less transmission we have, the more opaque this is gonna be, and technically, there are no materials in the real world that are like half opaque, half translucent, I mean, I guess you could like manufacture something, but they don't occur in the natural world. So you're usually either going to have complete weight on your translucency or complete uh, like opacity, right? And we have the base color, which we can use to change the tint. So if we want to have a slightly different tint on our lamp, like this greenish hue right there that looks very interesting, then we can do that. And finally, we can use the roughness, okay, to change how the glass looks. The more roughness that we add, the more sort of like frosted the whole thing is going to look. And everything, the reflections and the refractions are going to change based on this roughness roughness right there. There's one more thing, which is the index of refraction. And every single object in the real world has a specific index of refractions. For instance, a glass, like a glass or a glass made out of glass. <laughs> it's going to have a specific index of refraction. Diamonds have a specific index of refractions. Elements, like, a, like actual chemical elements, they each have a different index of refraction. And you can look those online to make sure you get the precise one. However, usually the higher the index of refraction, the more intense the sort of like bending of the light is going to be. And the lower the index of refraction, the less bend there's going to be. So if I were to place this index of refraction at set one, what's going to happen is we're just going to see through it because the, the light's not being bent at any point. And this pretty much just becomes like a film, like a completely transparent film. Uh, if we go really high to like a five, you're going to see that this thing's going to start shining more because it's bending light more and, and therefore it's like bouncing more times inside of this spherical element. And again, we get a different result. And you're free to experiment with whatever value you find that's going to be helpful for the asset that you want to create. So once we understand that, then that pretty much tells us that we can use all of the maps that we normally use. We can use normal maps, we can use base color maps, we can use metallic, but we need to properly set them up inside the substance, and that's what we're going to do just now. Now that we're here inside of Substance, let me show you very quickly how to set up glass. It's very, very simple. Now, you do need to do a couple of steps. First of all, you do need to be working on Substance 9.0 or up. I think 9.1 was the first like version where they introduced uh, glass. And once you load in this element right here, your, your normal element, there's two things that you need to make sure you have. First of all, on your shader settings, make sure you're using this ASM metallic roughness, which is the Adobe substance material or Adobe like, standard material or something that uses the specific parameters that are going to allow us to see translucency. Otherwise, if you try to use some of the old ones right here, you're not going to get translucency. Once you have that one inside of this thing, shader settings, again, you're just going to go here to geometry and you're going to make sure that you have this interior enable translucency. That's it. That's all you have to do. If you do that, once you go into layers, we're going to be able to add a translucency channel. So we need to go to texture set settings. And over here in channels, we're going to add a translucency channel. Again, that's it. Just add a fill layer. And this fill layer, I'm going to call it glass. We go down here. You can see that we have translucency right over here. And we just need to push the translucency slider all the way up. And there you go. You got glass inside of Substance Painter. No big deal. Now, once we have this, we can change the roughness, right? As we talked about inside of um, inside of Blender, right? It's the same thing. We have a little bit of roughness, or just like barely any roughness. Uh, we can change the tint of the of the glass as well. The more roughness, the more we're going to be able to see the tint. In this case, I don't want any tint. 
Uh, you can add height and stuff like that. In this case, we don't need height on this one. We don't need normal map. We don't need metallic. We just need color, roughness, and translucency. Now, let's add two layers. I'm going to keep it very simple so we can see how this works, but you can make this as complex or as simple as you want. And if you want to learn more about substance, of course, we have a full course also on the site where we go all over a lot of the tools here inside of the software. So if you're completely new to substance or you're learning the software, eh, make sure to check it out and support us. That's also a good way to support the channel. Now, once we have this thing right here, let's let's make this thing a little bit more interesting. First of all, I'm going to change the, the color all the way down to black so that we get a, a nicer effect right here. And I'm going to add a new fill layer. And in this fill layer, the only thing that I want to be modifying is the height information. I'm going to add a black mask. And on this black mask, I'm going to add a fill. And I'm going to add a very basic scratches. I want the, the glass to be very scratched. So I think there's one here called grunge scratch. It's fine. There you go. So if we add that, as you can see right here, we can play with the element. And of course, if we go over here, we can push the height in and look at that. We start getting this very nice detail that's only changing the surface of the glass. So all of this is going to be baked down onto the normal map of the object, right? If we go here to normal plus height, there you go. That's on the normal map. And it's going to look very nice because it's going to change how our element is just looking. And the cool thing about all of this is that, of course, we can tile this a little bit more so that the... The scratches are a little bit nicer. There we go. It's kind of like frosted glass or something. And, of course, we can play with how many scratches we want. So in this case, I want to have a little bit fewer scratches, something like that. You can add bigger dance. You can add smaller dance, whatever you want. Now I'm going to add another fill layer, and this one's going to be important because one of the things that I want to do is I want to add a little bit of a, of a sort of like a damage to the whole thing. So if I grab, let's say, this metal rust right here, and I add it to the color of the object... There you go. We're going to be replacing everything with this base color right here. Now, this is very important. I did not add this layer and then add this thing. I added only the base color of this rust on this area so that I still have access to all of this because I need to set this translucency to zero. Otherwise, when I export the map, everything's going to be translucent and I'm not going to be able to tell the shader like which things I want to have. Now, this one's going to be like suit. So I'm going to make this like really dark, but I like the color variation that we get from those elements right there. Now, one of the things that we can do here is we can definitely increase the roughness. So it's like very, very like dirty, very flat, right? Something like this. And now, of course, I'm going to add a black mask and I'm going to add a paint layer. Let's do, let's do paint layer. So I'm going to go here to my paint layer and I'm going to use this uh, dirt spots. And what we can do is we can paint in where we want this suit to be. Like all of this, like lower sections of the lamp, right? Like where, this is where I would expect most of the stuff to, to be present. And as you can see, especially if I press Z and we go to the uh, to this mask right here, this is what I'm painting. I'm gonna paint like just a general like line right here, and then I'm gonna go with a more solid brush like this basic hard, so that it's completely uh, probably that's a little bit too much. Go basic soft. So we get a nice little gradient right here. So we're gonna have a lot of suit on the bottom part of the glass, and not too much suit on the upper parts. So it's gonna be a little bit like a gradient. And again, you can spend as much time as you want on this uh, process right here. I'm going to press M to see the material, and this is what we see. Now, it might look a little bit weird right now, and the reason why that is is because it's having a little bit of a hard time trying to interpolate which parts of the object are translucent and which parts are solid. As you can see right there, it's, it's not really, like, it, it only sees either complete solid or non-solid. And that's something that we're definitely going to change. So the first thing we can do here is we can add a levels modifier, and we can push this thing so that we get all of the points there on one side. See that? So if we change the, the points, especially right there, that's pretty much the mask that we want to have. So all of that is going to be the suit that we're going to have on our element. So it's going to become, there's not going to be any gradient on it. We can have a little bit of a gradient, but usually this is the kind of mask that you want to have a, again, a little bit of, a, of care with this whole thing. Now, I know this looks a little bit weird, right? Like the fact that we see this super like intense effect and we get like a very quick like uh, like change over to this side. The, the way you can check this translucency, and I'm sure they're going to be fixing this relatively soon, is by going into the channels. And if you go all the way to the translucency channel, this is what you want to see. You want to be able to see your darks and your whites very, very cleanly. And as you can see here, we can actually see the nice gradient. Over here, the shader itself is not doing a great job of showing us that. But again, this is something that hopefully will be improved in newer versions. Now, let me show you how to export all of this. I'm going to go File. We're going to go export textures and you're not going to export PBR metallic roughness because if you do this, you're not going to be exporting the data that we need. You're going to go all the way up here and you're going to do this document channels plus normal plus AO. OK, now if we go to the list of exports, you're going to see that we're going to have the translucency right here, which is the mask that we actually need. 
So let's go here to the output directory. I'm going to export this on the on the desktop for now. Oh, wow, I got a lot of things right there. I promise I'm going to clean my desktop on the, <laughs> on the next couple of days. Let's call this a glass demo. There we go. So we're going to export right there. Oh, and settings. We're going to go here, desktop and glass demo. And let's jump really quickly into uh, let's export, of course. And if we check the output directory, you're going to see we have the translucency right there. Exactly what we need. Just a black and white mask that tells us where we have the glass and where we don't have the glass. And, of course, all of the usual things such as the base color, the roughness, the normal, and all that stuff. So let's jump into Blender. So this is what we have right now. Uh, we still have the little tent here on the glass. That's fine. Let's just like get rid of it. Well, in this case, uh, we do need to have it like uh, completely white. So I'm going to bring the saturation all the way down. Now, if we bring, and this is the most important part, if we bring this uh, element, the translucency map right here, of course, since this is a black and white mask, you want to change the color space to non-color, and we're going to get this color into the transmission weight. And look at that. We get exactly the mask that we're looking for. We're masking out what parts we want to have as glass and what parts we want to have as non-glass. Now that we have this, let me show you how we can plug in the base color of our element because it is a little bit tricky. Not super tricky, but just uh, it needs a little bit of uh, changes over here. We cannot just plug in this color into the base color because it will change the look of our whole glass here inside of Blender. And this is because this base color right here is also applying its color to the tint of the glass, as we've mentioned before. So let me show you here. I'm going to use a very basic RGB color right here. Let's use a green color so that it's easier to visualize. And what I want to do is I want to use a mix color node. The mix color node will allow me to place this green color on the first element, on the first input, which is A, and set the factor all the way to 1, so that all of this color is going through this node. And if we get this into base color, we get this. Actually, sorry, the factor was all the way down. 0 is factor A and 1 is factor B. So by 0 or by the factor being on 0, right, this is black, this is pretty much what we want on the black colors, this is what we get. We get all of this color flowing through the node and getting into this part right here. So the only thing we need to do is drag the same translucency map that we have right here, which is a black and white mask, like a mask, and drag this into the factor. Once we do that, look at that. We now are getting only the color on the areas where the suit is with a little bit of gradient, as you can see right there. So it doesn't look as ugly as it did on Substance Painter. We get this very nice effect with the dirt on this very basic layer. So we, of course, replace this one with the actual color, and we're going to get that sort of like dark suit effect right there. Ah, sorry. Just delete this note right there. Perfect. So that's it. That's how we connect the color. Now, if you want, you can play along with other nodes. You can add like a level, or so you can add like a ramp, and you can change how intense this suit is going to be. I actually really like how this one is looking, so I'm going to keep it right there. I am going to increase the roughness a little bit on the glass. Just a little bit, so it's a little bit more frosted, something like that. And then the final thing that we need to add, of course, is the normal map information, which is this one right here. So this normal map information is also going to be a non-color. We're going to plug this in to a normal map. There we go. The color goes into the color, and this normal goes into the normal. And what that will do is it will change, it might not be noticeable right here, but it will add some micro little like changes and, and dents, like all of the little things that we added to the glass itself. Now, if the normal map for whatever reason looks inverted, remember, you can always flip it with the white channel, uh, but it should be good because we did this with OpenGL. And that is it. That's how you build up a nice glass here inside of Substance and inside of Blender. So there you go, my friends. This is how you build glass inside of Blender and how you can texture this glass inside of Substance. We did something very basic, just added the normal map and just added this sort of like dirt layer. But I showed you the connections. It's very simple and you can make this as complex or as simple as you want once you're working on your assets. As I mentioned before, this character is from our Marvelous Designer course in case you want to check it out. And uh, the textures, you can also explore more about Substance Painter in our Substance Painter course. And I think I did cover pretty much everything. So if you're not subscribed to the channel and you like this, please help us out we want to reach 20k by our first year anniversary and we're really really close and we could do it with your help that's pretty much it my friends make sure to leave a comment join us in our discord and stay tuned for our next live streams and please keep the questions coming if there are more topics that you want to talk about i'm always happy to address them here on the channel have a good have a good one and don't forget always learning always improving